He's on that. Getting whisper jokes. Yes. I just love watching Denny's face when right. when it's played because it's been yeah. about two or three years now and it's still <laughs> But it's the double whammy because I mean, now I don't yeah. just have that. I got this guy. Yeah. yeah. How, about How that? long so, is your internship, Graham? When you <laughs> <laughs> when when you go to uh when you go to Ruth Christa, they come out and go, Hey Angie, hey Whisper, yeah. they do that? No, okay. no, just you. I just, I just made yeah, okay. you know, that's not, that's not good, but it's all I got. I mean, I'm trying to hang in there. <laughs> All right, here's my mea culpa for you. Okay. Um, I thought Anthony Richardson was really good. I thought it was the best game I've seen him play, Utah and Tennessee included. He played fast. He mm-hmm. runs really fast, mm-hmm. but he doesn't play fast. I thought he was decisive, to use Hayes' word. I thought he was. I thought the ball got out of his hand. When he was going to run, he decided to run quickly. The, court, the dual threat quarterbacks, which is what they all are now, to your point, they make those – decisions to run fast. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I yeah. thought he played as fast as I've seen him play. I didn't – I went back and watched. I didn't get to see it live. We were in Athens. Yeah. Um, but what I did think was that they played faster. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, they, like played, their tempo they played with better. tempo. They did. They didn't have as many missed assignments. He didn't have as many, which is probably the reason why they didn't have as many. But offensive line, I thought, played yeah. better. Guys seemed to be a little more open – and then he flashed the things that people are in love with about him. You know, the throws back across the body and not needing the lower body to get a, a ball there. Um, I'm still amazed, as many times I've seen this, to watch him take off and run. And it looks like he's not moving that fast, but nobody has an angle on him. Right. And Everybody and else is moving slower. That's what it yeah. looks like, right? I mean, the LSU game, uh, when he took off or whatever that was, it looked like he was on a jog. And he's running past elite athletes. I think to your point, Frank, it's just he's getting comfortable, and to his credit, he's put his head down. He hasn't listened to to the noise this this season, and he's got a goal, and his goal is just to continue to get better. And if he can put four games in a row in at the end of the season, I I, I mean, it's going to be hard to imagine him coming back. I thought the throw to Frazier's was maybe the best of the year. How, what what did he show you on the the lofted touchdown throw? The fade, yeah, yeah, I, there were a couple of those. I thought. Um, that one specifically, he just looked smooth to me. It, it, there was no doubt where he was going. There was no doubt that he could put the ball there. Um, and there was just kind of a confidence around it. I love the touchdown where he worked back up in the pocket. Um, I thought that was good because a lot of guys with his skill set, their eyes are going to go down and they're going to look to run. All right. He kept his eyes up and that guy wasn't that open. He had to throw him out a little bit. So I thought he showed a much better processing ability than what he's shown um, in the previous game. I'll tell you this, back to the fade that Hayes is talking about. Yeah, I've seen him look like Tim Tebow was a runner. I've seen him fire lasers like Rex Grossman. I've never seen him have warful like touch. That was a great throw. Yeah, that, that fade. That that I mean that guy was covered. It was to the outside shoulder. That was as good, to Hayes' point, that's as good a throw as I've seen him make. I think for me, that's been the frustrating part because I see that all offseason. Yeah. And you see, gosh, this kid is has got as much arm talent as anybody I've ever seen in my life. And then you thought you saw it during Utah, but even then, everything was a laser. Everything was gas. Um, now we're starting to see it. We saw it. There was a ball against, I want to say, LSU that was similar. Not as good, but similar. Now we're starting to see his ability just take over, and he doesn't seem to be thinking his way too much through the game. Danny, with quarterbacks is in, in baseball, and I apologize, that's always a baseball or golf analogy. Maybe that's all My I two know. favorite sports, so I'm good. But, go. but baseball pitchers that throw really hard sometimes have to learn how to pitch. Mm-hmm. You've, you've heard, you hear the phrase all the time. Mm-hmm. This guy, he, he throws hard. He's a thrower. How does he learn? It looked like on Saturday. Does that work with quarterbacks? Absolutely. Because it looked like on Saturday he was learning how to – he did. He wasn't just throwing hard, he was learning how to pitch. Absolutely. There's a reason why when you go to a game on Friday nights, you see maybe three different routes. And when you turn on your average high school player's film, you see go ball after go ball because they just throw it as far as they can and a good athlete runs under it. Right. When you're looking at quarterbacks, if you start to see balls that are dropping in over the second level in front of the third level and you start to see them work in the middle of the field and coming off of two progressions and still layering the ball to them, that's a really good player. And Ant has that in him. To your point, he's just had to learn how to apply it during a game. And this is, well, they just played their ninth game, eighth game, ninth. Right. ninth. So he started 10 games. Yeah, right. That's, that's literally it. Good point. Um, so I think he's just trying to, and by the way, I, I mentioned this last week, and I'm I've, sitting in the stands watching 
Tennessee, Georgia. I can't believe Anthony put the numbers up he did against Georgia. Yeah, uh, those defensive backs are. How has Georgia not missed a beat on yeah. this? It's unbelievable. It's we were up pretty high. It's amazing how good they are. It's unreal. Yeah. They could have. They could have beat Tennessee if it hadn't rained. They could have beat them by thirty points. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um. And getting back to Anthony, uh, so he's back at the swamp. Uh, final home game Saturday against South Carolina. What will be some challenges for him, and and how do you think he'll play? He stacked some pretty good games up. Um, again, you know, statistically, I know they didn't win against Georgia. They didn't win against LSU. But I don't think either one of them are his fault. He made he missed a couple plays, but all in all, he kept them in games. Then we see him answer with what I would say, like Frank said, a complete game for the most part. He missed a couple checkdowns on Saturday. For him, the next step is can you stack elite games together? Mm-hmm. Not good games, but elite games. Can you come back out? With South Carolina knowing that, okay, we're catching him at the wrong time. We're going to have to spy him again. We're going to have to change our defense, something he hasn't seen. And then what do you do with that? Do you freeze up or do you play freely like you have the last couple of weeks? And for me, that's what I'm going to be looking for. And and he's shown that if he can play freely and he can play fast, outside of top five teams, they have a chance against everybody. Right. And that's a lot of pressure, but it's also a lot of responsibility. And that's good. He, he needs to feel that pressure right now. And then you get the week with Vandy and then you got to do it again with Florida State. And I'm excited for him for that. I'm excited that he's got four game stretch here where you look at it and go, he could go for 300 every game. Yeah. And yeah, it's a good take. I, uh, I said this earlier in our program and I was defending Florida a little bit, but it certainly is a way to defend him a little. Not that he needs defending, but they have played nine games. I don't know that I've ever seen it quite like this, not in a while. They've played nine games. Six of the opponents have been in the AP top 10 at some point this year. Think about that for a second. Six of the nine. Now, look, Kentucky turned out to be not so good anymore. A&M is certainly a dumpster fire by the time Florida got a hold of them. But, I mean, they almost beat Alabama, by the way. But but six of the – think about this. Six of the nine Mm -hmm. have been in the Associated Press top 10 at some point this year. So it has been a – it's been a baptism by fire for Anthony Richardson, who's had to play all that without a supporting cast. I mean, if we're being honest. It's been a baptism by fire for him and Billy Napier. Yeah, that's right. For both of them. I mean, talk about a what. It reminds me of the first year that Pittman was at Arkansas. I don't know if y'all remember that, but if you go back and you look at their schedule, okay, I want to say they played three or four of the top five teams, and it was brutal. Right, And Pittman found a way to win like five or six games, which at the time Arkansas hadn't won an SEC game in a couple of years. And then they catapulted that into a pretty good run for two or three years by Arkansas standards. I hope that's what we're seeing here. I hope we're seeing Napier and staff and crew go through the gauntlet and then have an offseason to go, okay, like we just went through it. Where do we have to get better? Not personnel-wise. Yeah, that's right. a given. But where do we as a staff with our 100 people, how can we scout better? How can we perform better? How can we be more efficient? So I, I, I'm with you, Frank. I, I think in the long term, this has got to be a good thing. I don't think on any level it's a bad thing. I think it's a really good thing. How well do uh, Richardson and, and Napier, how well do they get along? Great. Great. He he absolutely loves Napier. Um, Billy, or Nap, Coach Napier, runs the quarterback room, runs all the meetings. And Anthony sits right next to him. And it's I've had the opportunity to be in those meetings. And the way that he coaches his quarterbacks is very desirable. I would want my son to be coached that way. It's not he's not a yeller. It's okay, how do you learn? And that's a big thing, right? Like how how does my starting quarterback learn and how do I need to present this to him? And I get the sense that Norvell's the same way, by the way. I get since both those guys have such a wide range in their ability to coach and their personality that they can form fit to however that quarterback looks like. And that's a big thing in, in developing quarterbacks is explaining in a way that they understand, not that you understand. Yeah, I would think Richardson and Napier are both really good dudes. That, that's the impression. Those of us that don't know either one of them, just we just see them. You would get the impression there's not – neither guy's cocky. Neither guy's – you know, you know I, mean, I mean, Billy's not a screaming, demean coach. Anthony's not a hey look at me quarterback, you know, you know what I mean. And they're both really analytical. Yeah, they they both of them in 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 typical Anthony Richardson form. That I'm telling you, the 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 throw was also Frazier's made a great catch on it. Yeah. And you see that they asked him. They said, "What was better, the throw or the catch?" The catch. 
No. Most quarterbacks, even even just playfully, would say the yeah. throw. Yeah. But he didn't do that. Before we get off Richardson, because we've got to go to break. Okay. And you would know this. Right now, if he has f- four good games, is he still a first-round draft pick in the National Football League draft? Yes. You think he is? Yeah. Expound on that, because because I hear both. I hear some people say there's no chance he is, but he needs another year to get better. I hear other people say, no, they're going to – once he starts going to pro days and combines, they're going to fall in love all over again. I think – you, you got to realize that you don't need to have 32 first round grades. Yeah. Right. When the teams grade yeah, you, great point. You only need to have eight. Well, one. Well, that's true. Yeah, but if I, that, but if I that team you, loves I you, you enough. Point, yeah. yeah. But let, I mean, let's assume there's 12. We've done all these numbers. There's 12 quarterbacks that may take a, or 12 yeah. teams that may take a quarterback. We know what those 12 teams think of Anthony. Yeah. Like, we already know that. So, and, and we get those updates. And so, the the people we need to view Anthony as a first round grade for the most part do. And the truth, the real reality is, whether it's Josh Allen in Buffalo or Trey Lance in San Francisco, whoever, if you're big and strong with a rifle arm and can run, yeah. that trumps a lot of stuff. And he's and and now he's playing well. And, and for the record, Gator fans, I, I'm I would love to see him back in games. Yeah, yeah. That's not my role in this. So right. let's just cut that off before we get to December. Before you get blamed. Yeah, blame before he's December, I'd have no say so. He's coming this. out and it's Denny's fault. Right, exactly. I, 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 let's talk more about that. I want to talk about Jordan Travis and Trevor Lawrence uh, up next with Denny. Stay with us. 